And we're back. This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from VMworld 2013, gorgeous San Francisco, talking about the transformation to the software-defined data center. And as VMware said uh, in their keynote, networking is the next critical part of transforming uh, from the legacy environments over to the software-defined data center. So we're going to double-click in on that topic. Joining me for this segment are Denise Schiffman, VP of Product Management and Strategy with Juniper, and Hadam Naguib from VMware, also a VP for the Networking and Security Division. But welcome back. Hadam, you, uh, you're, you've, you're a CUBE alum, and Denise, you know, welcome, welcome on board for the first time. Hi, Stu, thanks. Thanks, so uh, what we always try to do here is we, we try to extract the signal from the noise, and uh, SDN has had a lot of buzz, but we want to unpack a little bit in this segment, you know, what's reality, what's shipping today, what's the ecosystem changing, and what does this impact mean to everybody out there? So, uh, Denise, if, if I can start with you first, uh, you know, Juniper is known for uh, trying to really innovate and, and bringing innovation to networking, and software has been a part of your messaging for a while. So can you bring us through kind of the last couple of years as to you know, what Juniper's doing and, and bring us up to VMworld today? Absolutely, so Juniper has really been focused on uh, innovating in networking, as you mentioned, Stu, and really looking at making it easier for customers to deploy um, their uh, infrastructure and scale that infrastructure with very good performance and very low uh, complexity. And we're seeing that extended in the virtualized networking world uh, by extending compute, the virtualized compute, over the network and making it easier for customers to flexibly deploy their applications and scale their infrastructure over time. All right, so, so Hadam. VMware you know, made kind of the shot heard around the networking world when they bought NICERA last year for over a billion dollars. I mean, VCs are pouring tons of money into the space right now. And uh, you know, I had Martin Casado last year banging on the table, we're going to transform networking. We've got him on tomorrow again, always excited to have him on. So what I want to ask you is, you know, we're sitting here with one of your, your partners. You know, what does it mean for VMware to really go into networking and how does it impact your relationship with your ecosystem? So I think that's a very good question. For us, in terms of how we're pursuing the software-defined data center and what we're talking to our customers about in the context of how we can move intelligence into software and optimize automation and orchestration for the software-defined data center, the network, as you've seen in the last couple of days with the keynotes, is a core component of where we think that enablement will, will happen. And we've introduced VMware NSX as part of the network virtualization platform that we deliver, and it's really for us predicated on being able to deliver for any application the capabilities of virtual networking, and a core component of that is an ecosystem that supports that. And so we've worked very closely with Juniper as part of that so that the customers who've made the investment in their infrastructure today can actually take advantage of some of the differentiated value that that infrastructure has as they put virtual networking uh, upon, their, uh, upon, their, uh, upon their infrastructure. Great, I, I definitely want to get into NSX a little, but uh, Denise, you know, Hadam said that, that differentiated value uh, that the ecosystem has, you know, what does this new announcement this week in, in NSX, how does Juniper get involved in this, and, and what is your differentiation in this marketplace? So I think it's key to say that first and foremost, we have announced integration with the NSX platform. And uh, what we provide is an L2 VXLAN gateway, which gives visibility and information from the non-virtualized part of the data center up to the NSX platform. So NSX can program programmatically provision the entire data center infrastructure. And what we're seeing, the announcements this week, are really about providing that functionality at the access layer on the access switch. And what Juniper is doing really quite differently and uniquely is providing that capability at the uh, aggregation and core layer of the network and at the edge layer of the network. So we're providing it on our switches and on our MX routers. And what this does for our customers, it allows them to deploy very flexibly 
their network virtualization. So they have lots of choice and flexibility okay, in what so, they're doing. So, so Denise, one of the things I know I've seen from Juniper and most of the networking community is, is flattening of the network and, and allowing that, that yeah. management. How, how does this tie into that? So it's, it's actually very similar. It's an extension from flattening the network. Uh, the overlay also flattens the network. Uh, but the key here going forward is being able to correlate what's happening on uh, the underlay, the infrastructure, the actual network infrastructure, and in the overlay. So both uh, the sysadmin and the network operator know what's going on, have visibility, can diagnose and troubleshoot that network going forward, and VMware and Juniper are working together to make sure that that happens. So, Hadam, can you talk to us a little bit about you know, what is shipping today, uh, the, the partner ecosystem piece, is this rolling out in phases, you know, and what should customers be looking for uh, over the next few months? So, uh, the products will, the, uh, will be GAing in, in Q4. The integrations that we've talked to, all the engineering teams have been working diligently over the last several months and are mapping to both the VMware release cycle and then their own internal release cycles. Some of them are shipping at the end of the year and some of them earlier on based upon chipset availability, et cetera. So, uh, we've got several customers in, uh, in early access, looking at the product and, and in using it, and as you saw it, uh, at VMworld, some of them made the decisions to move forward with NSX, and this use case is actually very important to them. I think Denise articulated very well. I want virtual networking, I want the power of a VM for my network and, and that operating model, but I've got physical workloads that I'd like to be able to integrate, and I want a simplified operating model where I can see the physical and virtual work together, and this is one of the things that the, you know, the, the two teams have worked together uh, very diligently to address for our customers. Great, so if I can follow up, on, on the virtual networking side, of course, VMware's had virtual switching and to the distributed switching, and they also had a, a, an API, so Cisco had had a switch for a long time, and we've seen a number of other vSwitches uh, from IBM and NEC and HP, uh, you know, does this change change that model, I, my understanding NSX really has an instantiation of open vSwitch or OVS in it, so what does that mean to kind of the, what we've been seeing in virtual switching in the past to today? I, I think what we've been seeing in virtual switching in the past is an extension of the compute paradigm to address networking. So the ability to attach two VMs together to be able to talk to each other, a relatively simplified view of networking if you take a compute out type of view. When we talk about network virtualization and we talk about the platform, what, net, what, what VMware has brought together with VMware NSX, it's a switching platform, it's a routing, it's load balancing, it's firewall, it's really a set of L2 through L7 services, some of them distributed in, in software to give customers the ability to really optimize their infrastructure around that. And it is independent from having to make any changes to the underlying hardware. So you can choose the infrastructure you have today or you can choose to move to whatever infrastructure you want that's optimal for whatever different uh, use case you may need to, to be achieving there. All right. So Denise, I'm wondering if you can up-level this for us a little bit. You know, Juniper's talking to a lot of customers. Uh, you know, I remember from uh, my days when I uh, used to be doing a lot of briefings with the enterprise, you know, Juniper was loved from their, their routing products uh, and some of the solutions out there. You know, what, what are the real challenges that you're seeing in the enterprise space and mm -hmm. how, does, how does this whole solution fit into it? So the real challenge has been the complexity in, in building out and scaling your infrastructure. And it's a lot of what SDN and network virtualization has gone after solving. And part of this really has to do with the, the ability to move workloads and move apps uh, within a data center, across data centers, is sort of the mecca or the promise of what we're trying to, to give our customers and what they're asking for. And it really is the, the future. Uh, so no matter what they're doing, if they're upgrading their servers and they need to move those VMs or um, they want to have load balancing between data centers or for disaster recovery. There are a lot of reasons why IT needs more flexibility in how they deploy. And I think this is the first time that we have a platform in place to make that possible. And uh, VMware and Juniper are actually working together, not only what we're you know, announcing this week, but really how this is going to work in the future. How will we route across segments? How will we route across data centers? Uh, and really bring the, the value our customers are asking for, which is that flexibility uh, to create that environment. So, so Denise, I, I guess in this change, what does this mean to kind of the, the network team and the network administrators? Uh, you know, I, I saw Juniper was at PuppetConf last week. <laughs> you know, is everybody going to be, uh, become a coder? Or you know, what, what is the future for the, the network or kind of the general administrative team? And I think that's a really good question, right? Because the networking team doesn't go away. They're still core. Um, in the data center and what they do. And, and one of the things that Juniper has is a platform called Junospace Network Director. And that's really designed to help the network operator and the network manager manage the infrastructure. Uh, we actually announced this week a plug-in with vCenter between uh, Network Director and v VMware's vCenter so that we could um, 
make it easier for a sysadmin to see what's going on across the infrastructure. We also provide that capability to the network operator. So in um, Network Director, we correlate what's going on between the physical infrastructure and the, and the virtual uh, environment so that they know what's happening, can troubleshoot, know where the VMs are, know what the applications, where the congestion is, uh, and they can help uh, make decisions and solve problems. All right, so, so Denise, I, I have to ask the question. I've seen on Twitter one of the cr critiques here is there hasn't been as much security discussion uh, in, in, the, in the networking space. So uh, you know, I, I know you've got a team that looks at the security space uh, that I've been seeing on Twitter. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you know, can, can you address you know, what does this mean for the security discussion? Um, well, security is core, right? And especially when I'm talking about if you're at the edge of the network, it's, it's absolutely critical. At the application level, it's absolutely critical. And, and Juniper and VMware also are working very closely together on the security side of this, providing security around the application, around the flows in the data center, and of course at the edge of the data center. So you're, you're absolutely right, it's completely critical, Stu. All right, so, 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 so Hadam, I, I guess the question to you is, uh, as VMware is adding functionality, how do you decide you know, th that balance between pulling things in to make it simple for customers and working closely with the partners? How, how does that balance work? And can you tell us about uh, maybe, you know, w what's that engineering to engineering, belly to belly going on uh, between you and your, your partners? So it's actually, it's, it's actually quite extensive. It's, it, it really comes down to, you know, when we look at the platform and what we're trying to deliver, we, we do think there are four core tenets to what a customer is looking for. It really comes to switching, routing, firewall, load balancing. And the industry has evolved tremendously in that space in, the, in terms of the context of what it delivers in those four areas. But when I take, for example, load balancing, I think it's very, uh, it's very important that customers see that the, what VMware delivers in that space is really somewhat differentiated from what an F5 or a, um, or a Riverbed or a Citrix in terms of the depth of functionality, the multifaceted services capabilities that they have. And so what we look to do is to say there are some core functions that you can get from a load balancing perspective that VMware has, and then there's an enormous amount of extensibility where the investments you've made in these partners can actually be integrated in. For the, um, for the example that we did with, uh, with Juniper, both on the L2 integration for top of rack, also with the context of the security conversations, it's very similar. We look at kind of the core functionality we can provide and what meets that customer's almost good enough needs and then where can we actually bring in the differentiated value where customers are looking for the you know, enormous scale and capabilities they may get from an L3 and an L2 switch and how can we do the manual config, how can we do the automated configuration through that integration. Great. So, Denise, I guess back to the, the, the users themselves. You know, where's this conversation starting? You know, the, you know, who owns this? Is this purely a networking problem, or you know, do we really get to talk about you know business value to the company? Well, I think it's in both places, right? I mean, the, the conversation around SDN has been huge. It's happening in all parts of the IT organization, from the storage folks uh, to the networking folks to the to the server and app folks uh, inside the company. Um, and I think the question on the table for everyone now is how do we get from here to there? Right? I think everyone likes the idea of centralized uh, management control, distribution, and, and programmatic provisioning of workflows, um, but how do we get from where we are today uh, uh, to where they want to be? And I think that that's our, our job going forward is to help them migrate uh, to the next generation of networking so that they can scale their networks and they can scale their data center infrastructure and run their business the way they want to. Okay, I, I wonder Denise if you can also address, if we look at the software defined data center as a whole, we, we've seen growth of converged solutions and customers wanting the whole piece put together. Juniper's the best of breed, you work yeah. with a lot of partners, but uh, you know, how does Juniper get a seat at the table and get involved in those, uh, in those deals? Uh, you know, what are you seeing in that dynamic? So this has been huge for Juniper. I think with uh, QFabric and other products, we've really showed how, shown how you can converge um, storage and the main data center network uh, and make a more integrated, easy to use solution that does scale more easily. I think this takes it to the next step and, and partnering with VMware shows uh, how well we both understand uh, going from virtualized compute to the virtualized network uh, all the way out to virtualized storage. All right. 
So, so Hadam, the, the question to you is, you know, I, I looked at NYSERA pre-acquisition, phenomenal technology, everyone in networking was excited, but it was a one that, you know, if you looked at the top 20 companies in the world, they really needed it, you know, today, and really large service providers. We saw Citi and eBay and GE on as the customers. You know, is network virtualization going down market? Where are you, I'm sure there's interest everywhere, but, you know, what can we see as proof points, or what can you tell us about adoption across the board? Well, I, I think that's, so, uh, what we're seeing today is actually definitely that down market move, but we're, we're clearly in the early adopter phase. And what's driving a lot of the early adopters is the need to deliver services, applications, as fast and with speed into their infrastructure. Cloud really drives a lot of that conversation, so customers building private clouds, customers developing uh, developer clouds for themselves. So those top 20 customers have enormous needs around that space. They hit that obstacle that happens when I've got a lot of automated and orchestration capabilities maybe around my compute and storage, but I don't have that capability around the network. And network virtualization becomes a really elegant way to, to, to solve for that and accelerate their deployment of applications and services in their environment. Great, so uh, Denise, we're, we're, we're getting low on time here. I want to give you the last word. You know, conversation you've been having at the show or, or leading up to it, uh, you know, Hadam said it's early days. You know, what are you seeing? What, what, what do you tell people? What should they be reading? How should they be training their folks? And what milestones should they be looking for to, to know that we've made progress in this space? Well, I think the first step is really, you know, learning about NSX, this new platform, learning more about SDN, what it means in their environment, how they're, how they're going to change their data center environment, um, and grow uh, to a, an SDN uh, world. How they're going to think about deploying their apps, moving their apps, um, uh, how they're going to manage the overall uh, change in the data center and personnel, as you mentioned earlier. How is this going to work between the sysadmins and, and the network admins? I think there's a lot still to work out, but I think that the objective is clear to make it easier to scale, make it much faster to deploy apps and deploy the network. I think that's the, the sort of famous line our customers bring up to us is that I can, I can bring up the app, I can bring up the VM and the server in just a few minutes. It can take me three weeks to get the network running behind it. So we want to make that much simpler and much faster and I think it's the key that our customers uh, learn uh, how they're going to be able to get that done with both Juniper and VMware. Yeah, absolutely. There's a huge pro promise for agility, just what uh, VMware brought to the server virtualization market. That caution I always give is, you know, networking we usually measure in years, if not decades, how long it takes to move things. <laughs> uh, you know, we are seeing progress. It's still early days. So, you know, Denise and Hadam, appreciate you joining me on this segment. Thanks, we Stu. will keep a close eye on what's going on here. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with wikibon.org. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest at VMware. World 2013 right after this brief break.